Um, in the interest of time, I'm wondering whether we might leave that for our, contest our participants to do later, because I think we might get more value out of the last 20 minutes here with the uh, question and answer, but thank you so much for trying. I think that was something that we needed to have done earlier and it is all included in that document that I was sharing with you at the beginning of our session tonight. So you can go back to that drive and collect the video from Heath. And I believe you sent it out in an email as well, didn't you, Heath? Yeah, I, I sent it out, so just have a look in that email. I'll yeah. Put a link to the Google Doc and the video. Yeah, thanks for that. So that will make a big difference. All right, what I would like to do now, the recording's back on, is just check with Graham about what was um, happening in the judging room when you were in the breakout. Certainly. So we were discussing uh, ways of accepting judges' ballots and whether you needed to have physical pieces of paper and different ways that you could do that. Um, I think we said the most important thing is for your chief judge <laughs> to um, have decided on a method of communication before the contest so that you don't get to the contest and you're all discussing which way you want to go. And it doesn't really matter which way you do it as long as everyone agrees and it's going to work for everybody. We discussed various ways of doing it as well. Excellent. Thank you, Graham. And were there any other questions of a technical nature or anything else to do with the judging process from anyone? Craig, go ahead. I had some, I had a, had a couple of questions, but not specifically on the judging process. So just, That's all right. uh, yep. Uh, two questions, evaluation contests, people aren't meant to look at their notes. How do we monitor that? That's a good one. I've been a, um, a monitor for a waiting room or an evaluator's room in a contest and it's really quite hard because what you have to ask everyone to do is to remain on screen, to place their notes face down somewhere else, but to stay focused on their video so that you can see what they're doing. And, you know, they get their five minutes to run through their notes and then they've got to put them aside but then there's a long wait while each person mm. comes back in, does their evaluation. So back in the waiting room, it's, it's boring. So one, one session that I was doing, someone began dancing to music. So that was quite entertaining just for a little while, but you're not allowed to speak and interrupt their train of thought. So everyone is sort of thinking through what they're going to do in their evaluation. You just need to keep them on screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just oh, I was going to say just... Second yeah. question, Craig. Okay. I was just going to say they could uh, put their face mask over their eyes. We've all got face masks these days. <laughs> so, and the other general question I had was, uh, do we really need ushers? The Zoom master's going to control everything. Uh, we do need to have someone in the waiting rooms. So their role as the usher is the same. Um, so the Zoom master might put the evaluators into their waiting room, but we need someone in there as well. So the usher needs to be that person because the usher is then prompted to send each of them back in a particular time. And that might be via prior agreement on a text message or something of that nature. Yes, we do need ushers very much. Well, just on that point, will the usher have the capability to send them back or just to let them well, know they, it's their turn? It, they let them know it's their turn and they instruct them on how to leave the breakout room, not leave the whole Zoom. Yep. So that's their role. Okay. Over to Sanjeev, I think you were next. Yeah, so uh, just curious, how do you, uh, what's, a, what's a good way to probably decide who goes first, second, third uh, in the evaluation contest? That's something that we that's something that we discussed um, during the judging, and uh, Ilona uh, said that what she did was she had some some colours that she assigned numbers to, and so she said something like, "Okay, everyone, I've got green, red, blue, yellow, and pink. Which colour would you like?" And then the person picks the colour, and then that corresponds to a number that she knows, but that the uh, the contestants don't know. 
that was the Again, comes to the point of who goes first to choose those colors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yes. you can draw well, out from a hat. Interesting idea. Any other ideas for choosing? You can draw draw out from oh, a hat. Yeah. yeah. David's posted away in the chat there. The random one, yeah. Yeah, and it worked quite well on uh, Wednesday night. We had five uh, five contestants, and the contest chair just kept continuously shuffling cards and asked us in turn to say stop, and whatever number was facing her when we said stop, that was our number. She put it down, and then we went through them that way, and that worked fine. Excellent. That was a good question from you. Well done. All right. Have we answered that sufficiently? Yes. Thank you. Can we move to another question from Jane? Great. So I just wanted to know, what if a judge or a contestant wanted to protest? How would that work? Okay. Um, I've not been privy to any protests at all. Graham, have you? I haven't, but um, I noticed that a, cont a contestant, <laughs> a, a, um, a contest I'm going to tomorrow night, they've made known the mobile numbers of the officials, so the, the chief judge and the contest chair and so on. So what you could say is if you have any protests, you can make them to, I think it's the chief judge, isn't it, and the yeah. contest yeah. chair. Um, that's one way that you could do that, just making those things known to people um, mm. at the beginning of the contest. And um, uh, remind us, Graham, who is eligible to um, make a protest? Uh, the contestants. <laughs> okay. So and and judges, judges also eligible. Voting judges? Okay. And voting, yeah. voting judges. judges, yeah. Yes. All right, so contestants and voting judges may put in a protest. What might that protest be about? Anyone? Yes, eligibility. If you yes. know they're not eligible uh, for whatever reason. Um, originality. There are rules about how much is allowed to be original. And the new one this year, mm -hmm. which really should be pointed out very carefully by the contest chair, you're not allowed to refer back to a previous speaker or their speech in the same contest. So you can't say, as so-and-so said in his speech, and feed off whatever jokes they've made or what they've said. Yeah. And that one is probably an important one because I've certainly seen that happen, and that's new. Excellent. Thank you, Sandra. So three reasons. All right. That was a good question, Jane. Next one from David. I have three questions, if that's okay. Um, <laughs> the first question is, so normally in a contest, when the judge, when uh, the last contestant has spoken, then it's, the room remains silent, so then the judges can, can complete the ballots. So in a Zoom contest, do the judges vote in a breakout room or do they vote in the main room? Um, well, their voting happens in the counting room. In the counting room, yeah. Yeah, so, but prior to that, they've got those few minutes, they will be moved into a judging room and then move to the counting room one by one to give their ballot to the chief judge. So, and, so as in like, let's say the contest is finished, the, the last contestant is finished spoken, does the Zoom master then take all, all of the judges into that separate room for them to complete? And then yes. when they've done and they've communicated to the counters and the chief judge, then they get brought back into the main room, is that correct? Yeah, they actually sent, take themselves back to the main room once they have yeah. given their ballot, yeah. Sure, sure. So that was question um, one? Yep. So question two is um, normally in a contest, we, we need two timers. In a Zoom contest, do we still need two timers? Ah, uh, yes. That point wasn't made clear on the checklist. We need to go back and have a look at that. But you, you do need two timers. And I think um, when I was playing the role of timer, I was actually buddying up with Heath and one of us would give the actual times to the chief judge and the other one was showing the timing screen. So you divide the role and make it fair that way. So how would you go about that? 
I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said, David. Oh, sorry, how, how do you go about making it fair, as you said, sorry? Well, having, having, two having two timers, one does one role of showing the background screens with the green, yellow or red. Ah, I see. The yeah. other one takes the official time with the stopwatch and reports the time to the chief judge. I of see. course, okay. the two timers are, are, are talking to each other in the background via text message. I see, yeah. Yeah, that was question two. You're on number three, and then we'll move on. Sorry, can I just point out, um, Joy has posted two uh, very um, helpful uh, documents in the chat. So one is called All Districts Full Communication. That's actually, uh, what's it called? Um, online exceptions or something like that. It, it talks about all of the rules for running an online contest, and it covers some of these things that we're talking about. So that's definitely get that one, all districts full communication, and then best practices for online speech contests as well. Sorry, thank you. No, that's fine. And the rule book is there too. Joy, you are uh, my star apprentice tonight. And if you're all scrabbling to get all of that, just save the chat because all the links will be there for you. All right, third question. Um, and final question is, uh, how does timing work when it comes to technical failure? So let's say a contestant is uh, doing their speech and then suddenly for whatever reason they get disconnected or something. Um, what happens with timing? Like, do, do, do they get a chance to log back on? Like, how, how, do, how does that overall process get managed? Yeah, look, that's a big one. And it's only just come out uh, in the way of advice from TI. And that too is in your shared Google Drive for you to collect but I believe that there are some time limits allocated for when there's a connectivity problem. And it depends on which contest that this happens in as to how much time that should be, given that you've got seven minutes in an international, but only two in the table topics. So have a look at those rules. That's where you'll find the exact answers. I haven't got the times on the top of my Head. Graham, do you know for sure? The tall tails one, I think, is 30 seconds. I'm not certain how much the, the long the interference is, but when they recommenced, I think they said it was tall tails was at least um, an extra 30 seconds. And one of the other ones, I think, was a minute, but I can't remember which that was attributed to. Yeah. And, of course, we um, know them as table topics, not tall tales. Um, no, to the tall tales competition. There is specific rules for tall tales now. So tall tales has gone from being just a joke of a club contest into club contest and has now come into the mainstream contest rules. It's written into all the rule books and it's okay. covered. So, Thank you, Joy. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, no, and, no, don't be sorry. And only because that's what we're doing. Um, and you'll find there's an answer with that respect. David in in one of those three lots of files I've put up or documents that I've put up it's actually contained in one of those documents as well thank you thank you I'll look into it thank you very much excellent all right thank you David they were very searching questions uh, any others Sandra yeah I sorry I just put it in the chat I want to know about preparing and presenting virtual certificates Oh, we've got some giveaways for you. They're also in your drive. Uh, I think I have to move them into the right folder for you, but someone has very kindly gone ahead and created a set of PowerPoint slides for your certificates mm -hmm. that are easily manageable. Okay, and of course you're supposed to have them signed and I was asked today about how to do this, how to distribute the certificates and I really wasn't quite sure. Thank you. Okay, has anyone experienced doing that already, Sanjeev? No, no, sorry, I had a question. Oh, okay, let's find out if there's anyone has experience giving out the certificates yet. Um, Carol, we're doing, I didn't know there was anything available in a, in a um, I made up my own uh, PowerPoint using copying and pasting, so they're not the best quality. But uh, we are trialing the participation certificates as doing it as a virtual background. 
uh, as each speaker comes up, we're going to give that a crack through the through the Toastmaster of the night. Mm -hmm. And I think the intention is to then, um, with the PowerPoint slides, do them as a um, so as they as the placements announcements are being made they will be done as a screen share by the zoom master i think it is so you'll see the screen with the um certificate and the voiceover coming across that's what we're going to trial tomorrow night good luck excellent well christina uh, barbonio has created a set for you to trial and you can do something similar to what joy's club is doing and share them on screen or the Zoom master can. And of course, in the background, once the chief judge has indicated to the contest chair who are the winners, second and third, then that information has to come to whoever's got the slides to put the names onto them ready for showing. So yes, you need to be swift on that one. Right, we have a question from Sanjeev. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the question is, uh, when we note the first, second, and third, uh, and I believe these contests usually progress, right? It will then move to an area level and, and so on, uh, to a district level and eventually to the global level. So for whatever reason, if a particular winner is not able to make it to the next one, can the, the second place person get bumped up to represent? Yes, that, that's the usual rule, and that still abides even in online contests. If the first place winner is not available for that date, for the next level up, then the second place winner is, as you say, bumped up. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, and sorry, another, uh, uh, this might be an odd question, but uh, I mean, is there a, a mi minimum number of people that we need to have in a contest? Minimum number of contestants. Do you mean contestants? Yes. All right. So you're in a club setting or a, another level? Club. club. In a club? Okay. You can have one as far as I know. No, there's no limit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can have 10. The, <laughs> the rule is if you, if you decide to host the contest, the result of the contest will go into the next level. Yeah. For example, you have only one contestant and then later on you decide, okay, no, we have opportunity to nominate two, too late because you already had the contest and the result of the contest would is the final result. I can give you some practical advice on that. So our club, I think last year, the humorous, humorous contest, there were two people, two contestants, myself and somebody else. I went over time. So I was disqualified. All I needed to do to move on to the area contest was shut up when I saw the red light. And I would have got second place, but I didn't. So according to those rules, I was disqualified and one person went through because that was the result of the contest. Wow. Okay. So, so you yep. mean to say people go over time, they're disqualified? Yeah. They're out. Absolutely. <laughs> if you go more than your... 30 seconds over the allotted time, so seven and a half minutes, you go more than that in a speech, or more than your three and a half for your evaluation, yes, you are disqualified. That rule is particularly important to the contest organizers to educate yes. the contestant, because if you don't obey to that rule, you will lose a candidate who can progress into the next level. Yeah, and that can be very disappointing all round. And of course, if the club is not in a position to run club contests, they may, and they're in a small area, they may nominate those contestants to go through to the area. Okay. All right, that was a good question. Um, shall we do one more mock contest? Are we willing to have a go? How are you, how's your stamina? Do you need to have a break? You're ready to go? All right. We've lost one or two along the way. Um, but let's have another crack at this. And I'm thinking that, let me just go back to my notes. Now, 
Now I can't find my notes. <laughs> Bear with me while I do that. And we're still recording. So what I might do is swing over to Graham just for a moment to talk about the planning ahead for contests coming up soon and maybe some information about how to get your dates for your area contests into the calendar. Would you be able to talk about that for a moment, Graham? I can make something up, sure. No, I mean, yes, of course I can. <laughs> uh, so how do you know when you have to have your club contests? Basically, it's before uh, the area contest. So your area director should have uh, nominated a date for when the area contests will happen. And again, those have to happen before the division contests and so on. So in my division, in fact, we had a question about this today. Um, I, I know that the clubs will not be finished before probably the end of October or near the end of October. So the area contests are going to be in November. Um, so really, you just need to contact your area uh, director to see when the area contest is going to be held, if in fact you don't know already. Um, if they're efficient, they will have told you. If they're like me, then you'll probably tell them tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Graham. Excellent. Because I know that um, time will run away from you. And if you're needing help from Zoom masters and you need to gather your team, you need to have those dates well and truly planned. All right. I think in the remaining time, we might go for a mock table topics contest and um, we'll just shake it up a little bit that way. And what we need is two more apprentices. So who would like to be host and set up the breakout rooms next? Anyone volunteering? <laughs> no takers this time. All right. Well, oh, Kanchana, <laughs> thank you. All right, I'll give you host. And if you could see what you can do with those breakout rooms and give me co-host back when you can. And we'll assume this time that you're all competing in table topics. And it's now time for us to go into a table topics waiting room. So we'll get Kanchana to create a breakout room called Table Topics. And we'll assume that you've all been briefed. So what are the things that we need to have reminded our contestants about for Table Topics? Let's go to Andrea. We haven't heard from you yet. What is your first piece of advice to a contestant doing Table Topics? About the time frame that they have. Good, and what is that? Between one minute and two and a half minutes. Excellent, thank you, sir. Um, Andrea. And Catherine, we haven't heard from you. What other advice would you give to your Table Topics contestant? Um, I will ask them to set up them some time to think about the questions if they don't have an answer. So they may be try to repeat the questions for a few seconds to give them some time to think about it. And also watching the time and don't add too much things into one and one to because we normally for our club is only 60 to 90 seconds, which is even shorter than what just said one to one to two one to two minutes. So um, don't get too much cramming into the table topics. If you don't have any idea, you can repeat the questions to give yourself a more second to think about the questions. That would be good coaching. Thanks, Catherine. All right, so what we'll do, Kanchana, when you're ready, we'll just put everyone except myself and yourself into the breakout room for the table topics. And Graham, when you're in there, is it possible for you to play the video for that brief table topics? Or should we do that back here in the main room? 
You are still uh, muted. I can play the video. That's fine. Um, okay. Let's, let's see what, what everybody would like to do. If people have questions, I'll take those. Otherwise, I can play that. Yeah, video. yeah. See, see what happens in there. So the practice now is that Kanchana is setting up the breakout room and we'll assign everyone there. And away they go. And he might want to stay here, I'm not sure. All right, well done, Kanchana. What did you see in the breakout rooms? Were they just as I'd left them, one, two, three, and four? Yes, but I, I opened the breakout room. I saw that all the breakout room had some participants stuck in. Mm. And to make it sure, absolutely, I deleted the breakout room. Now only we have one breakout room. And how did you do the deleting? Because that didn't work for me. The breakout room, there's a button. You are the host now. Thank you. And we've just finished uh, another little session out in a breakout room for the purpose of this recording. Of course, you won't have been able to see what happened there. So we'll just get Graham to recap on what happened in the breakout room. Yes, we discussed a few ways of, um, what did we discuss now? It's gone right out of my head. Well, ask your contestants. <laughs> contestants, what did we discuss? Where to put the question or how, to, put the question. how to have the question available. Mm -hmm. Timing. Timing. Yes, timing, uh, the, the plus or minus 30 seconds thing for the times. Yeah, that's an interesting one because I was just reading in the chat that um, in some clubs they may have only been allowing 90 seconds for their table topics for purposes of squeezing their agenda. Mm -hmm. But in a contest, you are allowed your two minutes with your 30 second leeway without being disqualified. We didn't talk about contestants being watched so that there was no way that they could get a tip off as to what the question was. So when you're a table topics contestant and you're sitting in the waiting room or sitting in the breakout room, somebody needs to keep an eye on you and you need to not have any devices in your hands or in front of you or talk or whatever. But I'm sure it's possible to cheat, but you need to do the best you can. Indeed, we need to rely on integrity there, Sandra. But it is quite difficult to remain silent and keep um, an eye on folks in that waiting room situation and not always possible to know what's happening around them. So we just have to rely on them being honest. But that was is one of the jobs of the usher as well. So that, that is why we need an usher as well. Yes, <laughs> indeed we do. All right, were there any other questions about the specifics of a table topics contest? No, did you get time to share a video? Would you like to see one? Sure. <laughs> I picked out um, this one because it was so good. So I'm just going to share my screen and, and just play a little bit of it for you. It's 82, the finals, back in 2014. So here is the contestant being introduced. Toastmaster Gautam V. Sharma. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for everything. If you don't stand for something, you will fall for everything. Gautam V. Sharma. It was the month of February in 2013, last year, when I first signed up for my Toastmasters program and joined the club. The very first meeting I attended, I was there in a the corner of the room, hiding behind, afraid if I'll be called in front. And there comes the table topics master who says, Let's try our new member for a topic. 
And friends, that's the ragging you do to a new member. And they called me on stage. The topic was relatively simpler, not as complex as Madam Contest Master has given today. He just told me, Toastmaster Gautam, if you want to be a cartoon character, what would it be? If you want to be a cartoon character, what would it be, Toastmaster Gautam? And there I was. Cartoons. I watch cartoons. Tom, Tom, Tom and Jerry. Because Tom drinks milk, I drink milk. Thank you. And finally, when it was time for the reports, the timer comes and says, Gautam, you spoke for 40 seconds. I was happy. Yes, I spoke for 40 seconds. The next moment, the arc counter comes and says, Gautam, you had two small pauses and a long pause of 20 seconds. I spoke just 25 words a minute, but I'm not an Australian. <laughs> but then I stood strong and determined that I will be a speaker someday. Last time in my club contest, I contested. I went to the area. I went to the division. I, I failed. I came down. The next time it was time for humorous speech contest. I'm not a funny guy, but still I tried. I went, I contested at the club. I went, I contested at the area. I went to the division, fell down. And after one year of practice, mentoring, and as Brazilian Vasiliev says, reaching out, I am here today standing in front of you to become a speaker. And if I had not stood that day that I wanted to become a speaker, I would have fallen long back and destroyed myself. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can't stand for something, you will fall for everything. I hope you enjoyed that. I found it very comical and very, very well done. It was so good. What did you think? Anyone want to comment? Yes, Iwanona. Iwanona. Oh, it's. I think it was excellent. It's almost made me think: Was he prepared? Because he hasn't forgotten the topic, and he was able to conclude at the end using and wrapping it up. Because I was worried halfway through. It's like, how will he link it to the main topic? Because otherwise, he would not be, you know, uh, have low marks on the. There is this point when you have to link it to the topic. So I think that was very good, excellent speech. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yes, I did too. Um, and he did fill in the time with great skill because he kept us thinking, oh my gosh, has he forgotten the question? Will he get to the point? Yeah, so there was a lot of tension there. Uh, think, so it was very cleverly done. Yeah, I think there's a classic example of how table topics should be, right? It's It's all about being comfortable in your skin, standing there and talking about something. It, it, it has, it, and it's always best when you talk, talk about something personal, uh, something slightly on the humorous side. Uh, and as uh, I think uh, Ivona rightly mentioned, bring it all back. That, that one, one and a half minutes that you might be standing there and speaking about something dear to you, which might be coming very effortlessly, gives you the time to think how to connect the topic back to this. And, and put it back as your concluding statement. Excellent summary. Thanks, Sanju. I think I'd, I'd learnt in one Toastmasters training a couple of years ago to actually have some personal narratives and write them down. And of course, when you do enter a contest, is just review those personal narratives. So a funny story, you know, how you met your husband, um, the, the name of your first pet, or, you know, all those sorts of things, or, or just having a little bit of a, uh, an arsenal up your sleeve, which I thought was a really, really good idea. And just add to your collection as you move through life. Very good advice, Andrea, thank you for that. But the reason for showing it was just to let you see what it was like for a contestant on the stage and how different it can be when the contestant is on the screen um, to make allowances for that and how well do they use the screen, this small area and how do they get the same amount of energy showing within the screen? And I think that's what the judges for Table Topics and any other online contest will be looking for this season is how well they use the 
medium. So that would be my advice in you, for you in coaching your contestants, is make sure they're used to this medium. All right, um, that's all I have for you tonight. Graham, what would you summarize for us before we close the meeting, please? I think the main, the main thing to do really is practice. Uh, you've, you've seen a lot of these things tonight and some of you have had a chance to practice. If you haven't had a chance to practice, uh, I think as I was saying in the breakout room, just make up a, a meeting yourself, get your family roped in and uh, move them around in breakout rooms or whatever it is, anything that you can do to get practice to make it work. Ask your club if they wanna just get together for an hour before so that you can all see what the, uh, what the area is like and, and how the Zoom thing works. But whatever way you can do it, practice. Because even if you know what you're doing, <laughs> even if you think you know what you're doing and you think you know how Zoom works, unless you actually do it, you might get caught out. Thank you so much, Graham. I fell into that trap myself tonight. I thought I knew what I was doing. I do concur with everything that you've said there, but there's another opportunity for you. There may be even more. Tomorrow night, we will repeat this with different Zoom masters. Heath Gillum and Christina Barbonio will run a similar session. So if you want more, come back, or if you've registered, you can come back for that. If these are successful, we will run two more. We don't have dates for you on that as yet, but possibly before the end of September. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I've enjoyed being your host and I really thank Graham for being my buddy, partner, Zoom master too. And thanks everyone who stepped up to have a go at being the apprentice. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. By the way, just one, uh, just one curious question. I'm curious to see the recording. Because I'm just curious to know now, what did it record when we moved to the different rooms? Did it record the meeting room or did it record the main room? We paused the recording when you oh, went to the, the uh, breakouts because it doesn't record the breakouts and there was it no point in recording you. just what we were just doing there. So that's an unfortunate part of Zoom. I wish we yes. could record in the breakouts. But we've done the best we can tonight and thank you so much for joining us and thank giving you. us your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Bye.